The first concept is a concept called bearing. And bearing is basically trying to give you a direction. So imagine if you're, uh, if you're captaining a ship and you're in the middle of the ocean and you're trying to find your way to this island and, you know, you radio ahead and they say, eh, just kind of sail uh, northwest or so. You're probably not going to find that island, all right? So bearing is, a, is maybe we need to be more specific, okay? So there's two methods for talking about bearing. The first one is just going to give you an angle, like 164, all right? When a single angle is given such as 164 degrees, it is understood that the bearing is measured in a clockwise direction. So if they say 164, they're saying, uh, sorry, clockwise from north. They say, all right, here's north, 164 degrees clockwise from north points you in that direction, okay? So it's very specific, and it's clockwise from north. So that would be a bearing of 229 degrees. A bearing of 229 degrees, clockwise from north. Now the other way, maybe you'll like it better. Second method for expressing bearing starts with a north-south line and uses an acute angle to show the direction either east or west. So you're going to see something like north 42 east. So that's going to tell you like which direction to start and what direction to go. All right, so north 42 east or start with south and go 31 east. So you have to know your directions, I suppose. My generation said never eat shredded wheat, but I think your generation might see, say something like never eat soggy waffles. But, uh, you know, north 52 west, okay? Example four. All right, so here we go. Here you're going to have to... Um, um, you're going to have to draw a picture. And so they're going to use bearing, and you're going to have to draw a picture. Hopefully that involves a triangle of sorts, a right triangle, hopefully. Let's see. Radar stations A and B are on an east-west line. So let's start with that. Okay, A and B are on an east-west line, 3.7 kilometers apart. So I'm going to label this. Hopefully this turns into a triangle that I can use. Station A detects a plane at C on a bearing, that's what we'll say, of 61 degrees, okay? So it just gives you the number, so that means it's going to be um, clockwise from north, right? So here's your northerly line, and we want to go 61 degrees. So that's clockwise from north. Okay. Station B simultaneously detects the same plane on a bearing of 331 degrees. So again, you have to go clockwise from north. So there's north and 331 degrees. Now check it out. This is 90. This would be 180. This would be 270. So 331 is going to be about right there. So at that intersection point, it must be point C. Now that looks like it could be a right triangle. We can't assume, so we're going to have to figure some things out here, I think. Okay, so, you know, check it out. This north and this is east-west, that must be a 90-degree angle. We can get that from the details of the picture. And so, if you think about 90 minus 61, 90 minus 61 is, this is 29. This must be 29 right there, all right? So, let's see what else we can find. Okay, now check it out. If you went all the way around in a circle, that would be 360 degrees. Okay, all the way around is 360. Well, we didn't go all the way around. We only went around 331. So, 360 minus 331, that means this part right here is 29. Okay, now that doesn't help me because that's not inside my triangle, but I can subtract kind of in the same way that I just did. This is 90, subtract 29, tells me that this piece right here is 61. Okay, I really want to know what that angle is at C, but now we can just use our regular old um, property of triangles where everything adds up to 
180. So if we know 180 minus 29 minus 61, ah, yes, that tells me that this angle must be 90. Okay, and that's crucial because we don't know how to solve it yet unless we have a right triangle. Now we do, we should be able to um, use Socotilla. So most importantly, it says find the distance from A to C. I haven't really labeled that yet, but from A to C, we're trying to find this distance right here. Okay, so check out your right triangle. There's a right triangle here. We've got an angle 29. We've got a hypotenuse. We want to know adjacent. It looks like that can be cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse after all. So we should be able to set this up now. Cosine 29 degrees is going to equal adjacent side x over hypotenuse 3.7. Now we've seen this a couple of times already. We cross multiply, you're going to get x equals 3.7 times cosine 29. About 3.2. So x is about 3.2 kilometers. Example four, from a given point on the ground, the angle of elevation to the top of a tree is 36.7 degrees. From a second point 50 feet back, the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 22.2 degrees. Find the height of the tree. All right, trying to find the height of the tree. The key to this problem is noticing the two different triangles. Okay, there's the height of the tree. But you should see this right triangle right here. Okay, And if I want to know the height of the tree, this triangle is set up for me to look at the tangent ratio. So I would say something like tangent 36.7 degrees equals opposite side H over adjacent side X. Okay. Now the problem with this equation is I've got two variables in it. And I can't do much with one equation with two variables in it. If you've got two variables, you're going to need a second equation. All right, you would have to have a system of two equations with two variables if you're going to solve. However many variables you need, you're going to need that many equations. So you should be able to see something out of the bigger triangle. Okay, so if you look at this big triangle right here, you can make kind of the same statement and use a tangent again. Tangent 22.2 degrees equals opposite side is still H over the adjacent side. Now notice that that big long side right there is not 50. It's 50 more than x. And so you could say that bottom side is x plus 50. Okay. So the key here is you've got two equations with two variables. You're going to have to solve a system of equations. Now yeah, I know you've probably never solved a system of equations with trig in it before, but it's really not much different than any other algebra problem. What you might consider doing is isolating the H in each of these two equations. So we've done problems like this where we've had to cross multiply. H is going to equal X times tangent 36.7 degrees here. And if you did the same thing with the blue one, H is going to equal X plus 50 times tangent 22.2 degrees. So what we can do is, since both of these two things are equal to H, they're both equal to the same thing, so then they must be equal to each other. So you would just set those two things equal to each other. Now really, at any point in this problem, you could have typed in tangent 36.7 and tangent 22.2. I've kind of held off on it, but let's go ahead and do that now. Tangent 36.7 and tangent 22.2. You're going to have those numbers, so just replace the tangent 
statement with those decimal approximations. 0.7453, so I've got 0.7453x. I like rounding off to four decimals, so you can do more. I wouldn't do less, though. And tangent 22.2 .2 was 0 0.4081. So 0 0.4081. And really, all we're doing is solving this equation at this point. Now, also, I've approximated, so technically we're not equal. We're approximately equal, so keep that in mind. We have rounded off at this point. So just do your algebra. We're going to distribute. You get number times 50, and you've got about 20.4046. I would subtract this number over. Point three three seven two. And then divide. Keeping in mind, we are only approximately. So we've got about 60.5. Bless you. Okay, X equals 60.5 feet. That's not the answer, though. Okay, right? That's not the answer because the question wanted to know the height of the tree. So we're just going to have to do... Um, another trig function. So I would just look back at this red triangle again. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Not the only thing, but the easiest, I think. And we knew that tangent 36.7 degrees was equal to opposite side H over this number X. Or I guess what we could have done was just plug that X in for right there because you're going to have H equals 60.5 times tangent 36.7. Yeah, about 45.1 feet. Notice it says round to the nearest foot. So let's go ahead and round to the nearest foot and call that 45 feet. The height of that tree is 45 feet. Example 5, the bearing from A to C is south 52 degrees east. The bearing from A to B is north 84 degrees east. The bearing from B to C is south 38 degrees west. A plane flying at 250 miles an hour takes 2.4 hours to go from A to B. Find the distance from A to C. Okay, there's a lot. There's a lot in this problem. If you don't break it down into parts and draw a good picture, I just I don't see how you're going to get it. Okay, so let's just go back and, and think about this thing piece by piece. The bearing from A to C is south 52 degrees east. All right, so this is in the method two, and method two you're going to start with a north south line. All right, start with the north south line. It says south 52 degrees east. So remember, here's south, here's east. So start with south, and you're going to go 52 degrees to the east. So let's just put A right here. Okay. From A to C. So C is going to be on that line somewhere. We'll put that in later. The bearing from A to B is north. 84 degrees east. So, all right, we're going to start with north and go around to the east. So, north, 84. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, 
So 84 is almost 90. Okay. So I'm just going to stick point B right there. North, 84 degrees east. And then it says the bearing from B to C is south, 38 degrees west. Okay, so we've got another bearing from B to C. So there's your north-south line, and it says south, 38 degrees west. Okay, so we need to go from here to the west, from south to the west. So 38 degrees to the west. Oops. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Nope. <clears throat> Something like that. Okay. Now, it kind of looks like a right triangle. Um, hopefully that's a right triangle. But you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to figure it out. You can't just assume that that's a right angle down there where we're putting point C. Okay. I think that's a right angle. Can't assume, though. What you're going to need to do is use some geometry. Back in geometry class, you learned that these three angles added up to what? 180. Remember that? All right. So if you take 180 minus 84 minus 52, you can deduce that that missing angle right there, that missing piece, is 44 degrees. Okay, so something else you learned in geometry class, all right, this one's not as, as easy to remember, but if you've got something like this, okay, so you had parallel lines cut by a transversal, and you might remember something called alternate interior angles, this angle and this angle were congruent, you might remember that, alternate interior angles are congruent, that's not what I see in my picture though. I see these two angles. Those two angles are obviously not congruent. Those were same side interior angles. Do you remember what those two angles did? Added up to 180. Very good. Okay, so let me clear all this out. So 84 plus something is 180. You can probably do that in your head. Figure out that that's 96. Okay, now 96 doesn't help me in my triangle. It's not inside my triangle, but it does help me overall because now I can see another 180 right here. Those three angles add up to 180. And so we can say 180 minus 96 minus 38 and get 46. So now I know this angle inside here is 46 degrees. And now we use more geometry and add up the three angles in a triangle. Those three add up to 180. And so what that means is this is going to be a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's really important. We wouldn't be able to do Sokotoa without that 90 degree angle. Okay, 180 minus 44 minus 46 is going to give me 90. Um, I've got my right triangle. Okay, now... It says a plane flying at 250 miles per hour takes 2.4 hours to go from A to B. So they're, they're going from A to B right here. And it says it's going to take them 250, or they're going 250 miles per hour for 2.4 hours. All right, that's fine. But then they talk about the distance from A to C. Find the distance from A to C. We want to find this distance. I'm going to call it X. So what you're going to have to notice here is that they're asking you for a distance and they're giving you a rate and a time here. Okay, so you have to be smart enough to notice and remember this formula, distance equals rate times time. Okay, so we can do distance equals rate times time to find the distance from A to B. 250 miles per hour times 2.4 hours is going to give me a distance. I can tell that those hours are going to cancel. 250 times 2.4 give me 600 miles. 
And so they didn't come right out and tell me 600 miles here, but we can figure out that that's 600 miles. And so if you look at your right triangle, there's a lot of information given here. Okay, there's a lot of information given here. But now I can do a trig function. I can do some Sokotoa because I've got an angle 44 and I've got an adjacent side X and I've got a hypotenuse 600. So that looks like cosine, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine 44 degrees equals adjacent side X over hypotenuse 600. Or X equals 600 cosine 44. About 431.6. So the distance from A to C, 431.6 miles.